The axial seamount volcano off of the west coast had a collapse in one of the chambers here. You can see this is back in the news, miles deep underwater volcano off west coast could erupt. So what we did is we went to the live feed of Ocean Observatory's initiative to go look on the ocean floor for you so that we can get a little bit more details. And we saw a lot of different things happening that you really need to pay attention to. Just in the last few days, these are the Washington University earthquakes that has been recorded. You can see all the red ones are 2.5 kilometers, but a bunch of them have been recorded underneath the ocean. Look at this on screen right here. Deborah Kelly, who works for Ocean Observatories, she saw a large caldera on the sea floor that collapsed, and it was the collapse of the magma chamber that caused this situation to happen. And we're gonna to listen to a little bit of what she's gonna say here. Now, and every time we go through this volcanic cycle, we're learning things new. Debbie Kelly, a University of Washington oceanography professor, has been studying the axial seamount for years. If we didn't have the ray out there, people would not know that it was gonna erupt. Now, the other thing they're saying is that officially it's highly unlikely that is going to be a tsunami that hits the West Coast. I want to see what you think about that. And I'm going to prepare you for the scenario that is unlikely by the information I've received and put this full map together so you can look at this, but listen to what they say. It's unlikely for the underwater eruption to trigger a tsunami. One, they don't have uh, a mile of water sitting on top of them, which is, you know, dampens it. But they also don't have as much gases and the, the magma compositions are different. So all of those things make it that they, they're not a very explosive eruption. So what you got to say about that? I want to hear what a lot of people feel about this scenario. And let's look at this right here. This is tearing apart, as a matter of fact. This same caldera right here are separating. You see these two lines here is going left and right. Now, what we got, though, is we're going to go deeper into the on-ground footage from the ocean observatories. Because we can see this right here. We're going to go to the ash vent. This is going to be important for you to see because we can see right here. Look on screen. This was just today. This was the 20th. I waited all night for them to do this live stream. And you can see that there are formations of cracks on the ocean floor right there. You can see the lines here. This could be where the new basin and caldera is forming. We can see the scenario right here is what's happening. This is when the basin forms. The chamber collapsed and cracked right off the coast of California and Oregon. And something happened along the area. Uh, it was some upwelling that actually happened along Oregon area. We're going to be showing that. But they say it's very unlikely that this scenario could happen where a tsunami hits. But in the unlikely scenario, we mapped it out here. And here's what you need to know. Look at this right here. Vancouver. In Washington and Oregon would be in the high danger zones. And if you want to stay tuned and updated on all this and you're newly coming in, please subscribe right now uh, and stay updated because we're going to be looking even deeper in this. We need to go further because the last time they showed this, it doesn't look like the live model I'm seeing today. So it actually looks a little bit more open. Let's go to that right now. So we're going to go into the Washington EDU map, y'all. So look at this, right off Oregon, we got the mid plate, and this is where Cascadia subduction is on. Here's the axial seamount. And if we go down, and this is the caldera, look at this right here. All the yellow ones are just ocean seismometers, and that red one was the live camera feed. But you can see when we zoom back in here, that here is the axial base. This is live data right here that I'm showing you right now. And you can see the opening there where the water is now open. So the collapse of the magma chambers, and the lava flows and everything else is really going to tell us how this thing is going to erupt, when it's going to erupt, and what we're going to be looking at. Now we got to go right now, right here. I want you to see this. Look at Newport, Oregon. Something just happened a few days. It wasn't too long ago where we saw some upwelling. And I want you to, I want you to see this right now because it's live on map. And this is the same place where the subduction zone, they were going to go and remove animals. Look at this, unprecedented on April 1st, 2025, upwelling event, shallow profiler. And so what they found is offshore of Newport, Oregon, 
yielded unprecedented high resolution imagery of possible short lived upwelling event. And this happened uh, between the 5th of July, they say, above the plot's live streaming data sensors and stationary platform interface assembly. They located this at a depth of about 150 kilometers. Now, what we want to talk about with this upwelling that's happening here, we want to bring you into what's really happening in the ocean side here. They said they were going to remove fish. They did a subduction zone uh, pretty much. You can look at this right here, marine mammal unusual mortality. This is the same location. And actually today is the last day they get their official comments to remove animals off of this area in the Cascadia subduction zone because they're seeing multiple unusual deaths. So you can see right here, comments closed on 8 20 2025. No fisheries have received a request from Scripps Institu Institution Oceanography for authorization to take marine animals in incidental to a geographical or geophysical survey in Cascadia subduction zone of the Northeast Pacific. And so when we look here, you can see all the animals dying and stuff like that. All the way from Alaska to the U.S. West Coast, they're facilitating collection of additional samples of these toxins that they're testing to see what's going on. Right where this whole scenario is taking place. And if we look on the map right here, you can see that they're going to take killer whales, humpback whales. You can see they're going to take sea turtles, phytoplankton. Now let's go back into... The upwelling event that happened on Oregon's coastline just recently and then tell you a little bit more about this. If an underwater volcano magma chamber collapses, which we just confirmed, the most immediate significant consequence is the formation of a caldera, a large basin like depression as overlying rock collapses in empty chamber. So this was a magma collapse. But we want to talk about the upwelling. I'm going to give you this, the official data. As we look at the live feed one more time, I'm going to give you some uh, live feed video of what's happened with the actual seamount that I was just looking at the other day. But let's look at this right here. Short-lived upwelling refers to upwelling events that are brief and typical, and is, it lasts like a few days. But these events can also cause rapid change in the water temperatures, nutrient levels, salinity, impacting marine ecosystems, causing shifts in behavior with fish and phytoplankton. So this could be a major reason why they need to remove animals from subduction zones. Uh, and this is other footage here of the actual seamount after magma chamber collapse. And we've seen the cracks also in the floor. And I want to give you, they say the official date here, they don't know yet, but this is 300 miles off the coast of Oregon. And they say uh, from MSN.com that they're expecting that around 2026, let's actually go to the official reports when they say they expect this thing to erupt. Uncertainty means that the volcano, by all appearances, may erupt any day now, but researchers believe it's likely an eruption will come by July 2026 or as late as 2027 when the actual seamount does. Now, what are we looking for uh, when this scenario happened is the big picture here. Uh, and I'm going to read that to you right here, right live. So the first sign of the eruption is a sudden increase in earthquakes as magma pushes towards the surface. Lava flow spreads across the caldera within an hour. Fissures open up to 25 miles away. Seismic activity rapidly decreases over the next few days. But the eruption continues for about a month gradually shaping the seafloor. And if you want to stay updated in tune on every piece of information, I can tap into the fees and look at this stuff. You need to stay here and subscribe because we also seen a deep, deep quake that hit off the coast that it did. It, it, this was just the other day we were talking about this and we were talking about how I'm going to drop this right here because this is important to everything else. There's another crack a little bit lower down and I'm going to look on screen right here. So the Juan de Fuca plate right there where the actual seamount is a little bit lower down there. If we go down a little bit lower, there is another crack formation that nobody's talking about that affects a lot of this scenario. Watch the next deep ocean quake in Mount Rainier volcano heating up. They did a survey just the other day. It's in a live chat. Hundreds of you missed that and lots of you don't need to miss that because this actually tells us that the gas geochemist who went there 
start to see the heat chamber do something different. And I'm not going to give all the information on that, uh, but if you're just tuning in, the actual C-mount right here, we're getting live information from the University of Washington School of Oceanography, which tells us a huge picture that is happening. And if you look right here on screen, um, trying to pull this up here, this was, you can see the date on the top of there. All the species down there is also another sign of what's happening because we just told you when the water temperature changes, this is affects this affects them. So like actually, if they start to leave these areas, you don't see them down there, then you already know that something has really significantly changed. And that's why they keep monitoring the species as well, because this is going to be very highly important that they watch all these events. Now, Oregon, if you're in that area, you're in uh, that area, you seen anything strange, everybody, all of us, we want to see in the comment section off the coastline since there was upwelling that happened over on Newport, Oregon, offshore, and also in California areas as well. We want to know what is going on and if you are experiencing anything strange in the current areas, because this is going to be some of the top situations that we're going to be dealing with. And a lot of people obviously not following this. And the reason why they're not is because they're not tapping into the live feed. So if you just tuned in, I encourage you to go back and watch what we just put out, because this is the official data and we're just trying to get awareness out. We'll have a video on the left hand side about the deep quake that just hit and what's happening with Mount Rainier. I want to hear all of what you're saying.